I'm here to talk a little bit about cultural safety and humility, right? Cultural safety is mindfulness and awareness that people of all races, religions, and backgrounds have values, beliefs, and perspectives, and it should be deemed equal to our own. At the same time, exercising the ability to stay humble while creating safe spaces for all of us to uniquely express ourselves, remembering that expression is empowerment, and it's about empowering people. Safe spaces are so few and far between these days that it's, it's a, an unfortunate reality that um, you could very well be the safest place for anyone at any given time. You know, if you're patient, if you're mindful, if you're aware, um, the creation of safe spaces is critically important and it affects ultimately our ability to show up. And how we show up is critically important in every aspect of our lives, not just professionally, but also personally. If you have the ability to show up effectively, you have the ability to continue to be mindful and develop that awareness. There are times where it's difficult for us to show up, both as patient and provider. There are times where it's difficult for us to maintain a level of safety and realizing that um, there's a difference between receiving treatment and receiving care. And, and there needs to be a differentiation. They need to be separate. I think Western education and Western medicine has done a pretty good job of amalgamating the two. But the reality is, is that we need to differentiate treatment versus care. There are times where we get focused on our rights and our responsibilities, and sometimes they conflict with one another. There are times where we feel like we don't have the right to address certain topics and we don't have the right to address certain causalities. But the reality is, is that we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to educate ourselves. We have a responsibility to educate others when they see they need help. We have a responsibility to provide accurate, relevant information when it pertains to health and wellness journeys. And so if we can focus on our responsibilities as opposed to what we may or may not have the right to talk about, I think the conversations get easier, the relationships happen organically, and the reality is, is that we can then start to focus on where we align as opposed to our differences. When we have the ability to focus on where we align as opposed to our differences as human beings, we have the ability to develop a level of reliability, a level of dependability, which leads to trust, which then we can start to create those safe spaces by way of doing that. But it takes a, a level of, of courage. It takes a high level of willingness to be able to create that space. And it takes a high level of willingness to be able to uh, make ourselves vulnerable in those situations to be able to create those safe spaces. Ultimately, it's about focusing on where we align as opposed to our differences so that we can ultimately benefit and impact future generations. Impacting and benefiting future generations has nothing to do with the color of skin or anyone's culture. I think we're all here because we want to leave the world in a better place than which we found it. And the reality is, is that if we have the ability to impact and benefit future generations in a really good way, and we have the ability to leave the world in a better place than which we found it. But it starts with self. It starts with our ability to focus on where we align. It starts with the ability to humanize conversations. A bulk of the work that I do is humanizing conversations. It's about reminding us that trauma is colorblind. It's about reminding us that we all have values, beliefs, and perspectives. It's about having the ability to share and having the ability to grow and learn with one another. None of us is as smart as all of us. And when we put our hearts together, when we put our heads together, when we put our minds together, we can impact change, we can influence change. We have the ability to shape a better future and truly impact and benefit future generations. But again, we need to feel safe in order to do so. We need to feel safe in order to show up effectively, ready to listen, ready to learn, ready to foster healthy relationships, ready to foster healthy environments for growth. And ultimately, cultural safety and humility is that pathway. It teaches us humility. It teaches us the ability to be mindful. And if you can be patient and you can be mindful and you can create those safe spaces, again, we have the ability to create something meaningful. But again, there are times where we focus on our rights, our responsibilities. There are times where we shy away from conversations because we don't have the ability to show up. If we all felt safe, we would have the ability to show up effectively. If we measured success by how safe you made people feel when they're around you, as opposed to the dollar signs in your bank account, the world would be a much better place. We need the ability to create safe spaces. We need the ability to show up effectively. We need the ability to impact and benefit future generations in a meaningful way. We can do that by sharing values, sharing beliefs, sharing culture, sharing what's important to us and what's significant to us as human beings. Again, a bulk of the work that I do and the bulk of the conversation is humanizing conversation. It's about getting us back to the reality that we all tick the same on the inside. 
When you speak from here and you speak from here, the conversations will always get easier. We need the ability to feel safe in order to do so. So my hope for the future and my hope for healthcare is that we can focus on where we align as opposed to our differences. We can foster healthy environments for growth. We can truly develop and understand what it means to provide culturally safe spaces in order for us to show up effectively to do our jobs. And we can show up effectively to do our jobs and we're doing a service to our communities, our patients, our clients. But as the professionals and as the providers, we also need to feel safe in order to show up effectively as well. And that means having the ability to listen, having the ability to learn, having the ability to educate ourselves, focusing on our responsibilities as opposed to what we may or may not have the right to talk about. And when we can have the ability to do that, that and we can keep that mindset and we can foster those types of healthy environments for growth, we start to empower people. It's about empowering patients. It's about empowering professionals. It's about empowering people. If we have the ability to empower people to show up authentically as their true authentic selves, they're able to articulate what health and wellness means to them. They're able to articulate their health and wellness journey. Nobody, and I mean nobody, has the ability to dictate what our health and wellness journeys are to us. We are the subject matter expert on ourselves, and we will always continue to be the subject matter expert on ourselves. But we need to feel safe in order to do so. We need to feel safe in order to articulate and exemplify who we are as human beings. And if we can do that, and we can, we can truly keep that in focus and keep that at the forefront of conversations and reminding ourselves you could very well be the safest place for anybody at any given time, then we truly have the ability to impact and benefit future generations in a really meaningful way. I'm so grateful for the opportunity uh, to be here speaking with you today. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to share. I've been Jared Basil.